So today we're going to be talking about five steps to build an engaged audience on social media, because that's what everybody should be working towards there. Regardless of what your business goal is, your social media goal should be engagement, um, because the more engagement you get, the more visibility you get, and the more chances you have to grow your audience, bring in more sales, all of that good stuff. So um, building a community really starts and ends with attracting and interacting with the right group of people. But who are these people? <laughs> if you've already found your community, you're going to know that they are the ones who can't get enough of your content, your products, your services, um, and the ones who share your passion in a common interest or goal. And so that's really all there is to it. But making sure that you've thrown your lot in with the right community is key. So there are, are two trains of thought on this. Um, maybe you are are guiltily spending all of your time with a particular community instead of the one you should be marketing to. And if that's the case, then maybe you need to change your focus or uh, you know to the ones that you're spending your time with. or, you're providing the right content and offers and the clients and customers that you want are flocking to you. That's awesome. <laughs> so both of these viewpoints carry merit uh, and, and they're worth careful thought and consideration. But beyond those points, once you've identified the right clients and created powerful content for them, um, you need that client to find you. And so that is where social media really plays a crucial part in the whole marketing mix. So this is what we're going to be talking about today uh, with our agenda. Uh, these are our five steps that I'm going to be going through uh, so that you can get your engaged audience on social media. So let's start off with knowing your ideal client. So to make the most of your interactions with your ideal client on social media, you need to know as much about them as possible. So what are their habits, their goals, their dreams, their challenges, their preferences? Uh, what's their past? What are they going to spend money on? Um, and in fact, it's what they're going to spend money on that's much more important than how much that person makes, right? Um, so before you can figure out which specific client would be ideal for you, you need to first know yourself. <laughs> you can identify people who would make great clients until the cows come home, but if your personalities and methodologies don't mix, you're not gonna make a strong connection. So think back to your childhood, you know, maybe high school or even earlier. Um, if you weren't someone who was just always hanging out by themselves, then there were groups or types of friends that you gravitated towards, right? So maybe you belonged with the, the nerds or the jocks or the cheerleaders or the drama club or whatever it might be, right? Sharing a common interest also proved to be a bonding agent, something that overrides personality, but only to an extent, right? So for example, um, you were most likely friends with people who you might not have met, um, you know, those in other homerooms or those who were quiet where maybe you were more extroverted. When you belong to the same club, um, like the photography club or the science club, or in my, my uh, situation, inquire. Um, you had the most fun when you and your fellow group members, you know, you geeked out over your particular interest. So you had um, the most fun when you were socializing with people like you, uh, who appreciated the things that excited and interest you and vice versa. So that's not something that you can fake over the long term. And even if you do successfully fake an interest in an activity or a goal that leaves you cold, you're going to be bored to death or become bored out, uh, burned out really quickly. Um, so find a community that you can really feel in sync with. So with that in mind, what's your passion? What makes time pass in no time at all for you? Um, you know, what can you talk about for hours? Where does your experience lie? Um, what do you like to help people with? What do people always ask you for help with? If you take the time to sit down and really ponder these questions and not just gloss over them quickly, you're going to, uh, you'll be close to also identifying the sort of person who are your 
uh, your ideal client. So not someone who is an exact clone, of course, but who shares key interests, goals, and communication styles. So you want to dig deep here. Don't just think about the obvious events from your past. Um, especially look for activities or times in your life that you maybe took for granted. Um, say you were at your happiest, for example, um, when you hung out at the equestrian center and took horseback riding lessons. So don't stop there and say, oh, I should be doing something with horses. Instead, dig deeper. You know, what was it about the equestrian center, about riding, about horses that made you happy? How did it make you happy? When was this? What's changed since then? Who made it wonderful for me? Was it the horses? Was it the people? Was it about, what was it about them that made hanging out with them so much fun? So notice that if you're, what you're actually doing here is asking yourself questions that all start with who, what, when, why, how, where. So if you're having trouble thinking up the right questions concerning your past passions and interests, start with those words. Um, and the rest of the question should in general come to you pretty easily. You might discover that it wasn't the horses that you love so much, but being in the fresh air, uh, or that you love the particular time because you were uh, competitors on a team and team building is what lights you up. So really think about what it was that, that got you going. Now, once you've identified areas of interest that you loved and hopefully still love, don't stop there. Take a look at your personality. What style of interaction do you favor? Are you intuitive or logical, introverted or extroverted, conservative or a risk taker, creative or more structured? Uh, do you prefer being results oriented or are you more action oriented, um, disciplined, spontaneous, impulsive, cautious? So, you know, think about all of these things. Do you prefer to work one on one? Or are you more comfortable with groups? Do you like large groups or small groups? If you teach, do you prefer to teach live or do pre-recorded lessons? Um, is your communication style suited more to talking or writing? Do you like presenting webinars or videos? Or do you prefer writing posts or uh, producing audio files or podcasts? Lots of things to think about and all can make a big difference. When you understand what makes you tick, you're gonna be much more confident in choosing the right ideal client and the right community where you can hang out and make money and then be thanked for charging people because they're going to be so happy with your products and services. But we are not done yet. Once you've asked yourself these questions and answer them, turn the questions back on your community. How do they best like to learn? Are they more likely to read a blog before they'll sign up for a webinar? Would they rather participate in a webinar before they'll listen to a podcast? Or would they listen to a podcast before they'll read a PDF? So brainstorm all of these questions and answers on paper on your phone or on your computer, however, uh, you know, is most comfortable and inspiring for you. Um, and, uh, you know, take those results and highlight any common points or answers that really resonate with you. So now you may be asking, what does all of this have to do with building an engaged audience on social media? What uh, is, is all about, you know, so what answering these questions does for you is it makes it easier for you to pinpoint your ideal community and then engage with it. So um, Facebook groups or alignable groups or LinkedIn groups, you know, these all are are potential options for connecting with your people. And so um, I highly encourage you to find groups that that resonate with you, um, that are about your topic. And so let's take Facebook, for example. If you are looking for the right groups on Facebook, you want to first select groups on the left-hand vertical menu on Facebook, or maybe it's at the top now, depending on the version that you have, because it changes all the time. Um, but regardless, you want to go to the group section on Facebook and then search for specific keywords. Um, so you want to, you know, obviously search for groups that closest meet your market or area of interest. Um, Facebook is going to serve you up with all sorts of groups that it can find that's relevant to your specific keywords. And then you can make an informed choice on which group you're going to join. So for example, you might join the food photography tricks group if you teach food photography, since that's going to connect you with people who are looking to do more with their food photography. They're people interested in learning techniques and, and pro tips. 
Um, then uh, you want to, you know, find those groups and make sure that you are, are um, interacting with them. <laughs> you know, so uh, they, the important part is not just being in them, but actually doing something with them. <laughs> so uh, that is an important part of the mix is actually engaging once you get there. So focus on paying attention to what type of content incites these group members to respond. Um, do they like daily challenges or will they uh, turn up her nose in favor of a fun quiz? Um, will a tough talk post get someone to comment and share or are they most likely to communicate through messenger? Uh, do they always comment on Facebook Live videos but um, or, or do those Facebook Live videos get met with zero comments? Does the group get high responses to polls or more to infographics? Whatever it is, pay attention and meet them where they're most comfortable. And you're gonna enjoy a much more active community and getting people engaged with you. So you wanna spend time in these groups, make notes, keep spreadsheets, whatever works best for you. Um, and all of this is gonna help you really learn what engages these similar communities and what seems to leave them cold. So, you know, don't just join the groups and expect to then have all this business come your way. Really engage with people and the groups and see what gets people commenting back. And so often that means you have to comment first. So now let's move on to number two, and that is to be true to your brand and to yourself. Now, your true audience is going to love you for who you are, so don't fall into the trap of thinking that you've got to follow whatever the latest trend may be. Um, if you're just building your audience, spend some time truthfully deciding who you are and what image you want to present, and then stick to it. Now, that's not to say that you can't have your own epiphanies and change your mind about things. That's totally fine. But do it when it's right for you, not because you think you should or because the current top coaches in your field are doing it. Remember, this is all about standing out, not becoming one of a crowd, no matter how elite that crowd might be. Being utterly true to yourself taps into our hidden fears. You might be an introvert, and that's okay. Market to other introverted people or be the introvert that educates extroverts to help them reach more niche members. Um, find ways of communication that you feel comfortable with. Um, if you die of fright every time you have to teach live, then maybe do pre-recorded lessons. Um, if technology is your adversary, then don't waste time trying to become some sort of technological genius, that's not where your unique genius lies. Uh, instead, might be a better idea to outsource. You know, hire a VA who lives for handling your shopping cart or your autoresponder, or use a platform that makes uploading and hosting lessons really easy, like Thinkific. Um, focus on building those relationships and using the communication methods that delight your ideal clients and feel natural to you. Now, there is a time to treat yourself gently, but there's also a time to push yourself further out there, uh, maybe than you've ever been before. And so if you know that fear is really what's behind never allowing yourself to truly stand out, it's time to face that fear and conquer it. So you've probably heard that new things are always hardest the first time you do it. That's not unreasonable. But once you make that new way of doing something a habit, they will and do become easier. And the rewards can be tremendous. So not only can pushing yourself to stand out more brightly attract more of the right clients, it can also help you get out of income plateaus that you've been stuck on. Um, you know, you can fill you with well-earned confidence and maybe even change your life too, right? So if you can't seem to propel yourself past that level, um, you know, it might not be a bad idea to hire someone to coach you with that. Maybe get someone to help you with changing your mindset. Now, consistency is the true secret ingredient to becoming known. Uh, that holds true for any aspect of entrepreneurship, um, for your branding, as well as for the frequency with which you post and blog. And so in most cases, I recommend using a logo on all of your social channels, but you might uh, prefer a headshot depending on what your industry is. But whatever you do, 
I encourage you to use that same photo, that same profile shot across all of your social media and websites. Um, you will need a headshot even if you do have a logo. Um, and so if you don't have an updated logo, if you haven't got or a, an updated headshot, if you haven't gotten a new headshot in the last two years, you probably look a little bit different since the last time you got one done. So um, get that new headshot. There are so many fabulous photographers on Alignable that can help you. And so uh, when you're thinking about getting that new headshot, you know, consider wearing your brand colors, uh, for example, in an outfit that you're wearing. Um, how Think about how do you want people to see you? Are you relaxed? Are you more casual? Are you uh, um, more professional and serious? You know, think about that. Um, I encourage you to have some direct and friendly eye contact in there so people can feel like they make a connection uh, to you. So get a professional full photo shoot done. Find a photographer that you like and turn up with maybe some extra accessories and outfits, whatever they recommend, so they can suggest uh, different looks or combinations. They are going to have an, a good eye for this sort of thing. So, um, you know, trust their instincts. But I would recommend including some brand colors in there because that really helps when you're doing your marketing later on. Um, so decide on and use a set palette of brand colors and carry these across all of the appearances that you have online uh, in your, uh, you know, in resource boxes, on your website, in your media kit, on your stationery, your business cards, uh, on your profiles on, on social media, in your cover photos. Um, in the backgrounds of your videos, anywhere that you're going to be reaching your ideal audience, have that consistency going across everything so people always know that it's you. Now, do you ever do presentations? Um, are you an author? Do you have a hot product or a new business that's getting some media attention? Um, have people ever asked you for a bio? Um, if so, you want to make sure that you are in control of the message about you and your business. So I highly encourage you to create a media kit and put that on your website. So provide the photos that you want people to use. Mm -hmm. Feed them a bio that's targeted to your ideal client. Give them material in your brand colors and provide any other branded resources that make sense. So for example, um, Self-publishing coach Kristen Joy uh, Leidig doesn't wait for guest hosts or journalists to ask her for materials. She provides it all in her media kit in a really easy uh, select and lift format. So interested parties can scan down the page and help themselves to her long bio, her short bio, interview questions, assorted shapes and sizes of profile shots in high resolution, low resolution, um, whatever it is that you might need. Again, Suit your media kit to your brand and your audience. And if you're dealing with a highly uh, visual audience, go heavy on the visual design on your media page and provide more graphics and resources such as image quotes, uh, maybe other uh, uh, you know award logos. So not only does this come in handy when you're about to be interviewed, but you can refer back to your media kit quickly to lift items for social networks and posts. Um, I've done this for myself, and not only does it ensure this consistent information is being conveyed, it saves me a lot of time because I don't have to recopy something every single time. I just give them the link on my website. And so here is um, a, 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 a definitely a secret I want you to remember, and that is... Um, you want to um, carry your branding through all of your social media. So design cover pages and backgrounds with your branding elements. Put your brand colors, your logos, your profile shots on infographics or image quotes that you create along with your website URL so people can get back to you anytime they want. Um, and this is an example from writing coach Joanna Penn, and she does this all the time. So use these branded image quotes both in your media kit and on your social networks. So you can easily create formats of the same quote uh, for all of the top social media platforms um, that you use. So that's going to look great no matter what platform you're on. Canva is a great tool for this. And remember to check your current social media profile images. Um, if you have ha had your social profile for a long time and haven't done any updating in a while, um, most platforms now use circular profile photos instead of square. Some of them still use square. Hello, Alignable. Um, but um, you want to make sure that your current profile photo still works in a circular format. So if not, maybe it's 
time to update that logo or get a new headshot so that it's going to work in a variety of formats. Now, tip number three, you don't want to invest time in what isn't working anyway. This is something that I hear from a lot of people, that social media is a time suck. And yes, you could spend all of your day on social media and in creating resources for each different platform, but I'm here to tell you, don't do that. <laughs> Instead, focus on one to three platforms where your ideal, I, ideal clients are most active and engaged already. So find out where they're hanging out. If your ideal client is a fellow entrepreneur, check their website to see which social badges they display on their websites. Visit those profiles through those badges or the icons and see where they are consistently active. Find out what hashtags your specialty niche users are using, um, as well as where they're using them. You definitely want to join Facebook, LinkedIn, or Alignable groups and engage with these particular clients or desired clients. So when you feel like you've gotten to know them well, then look for an opportunity to branch out and start your own group, one that's aligned with your focus and your ideal client's needs. So for example, if you notice a small group branching off within the group and their interest suits your focus, maybe create a group around that focus and invite those members specifically to join it. So for example, um, if you teach anime and you're in an art group where several members exhibit a passion uh, for the anime style, that would be a good opportunity to break off and join your own group. So focus on one or two social media accounts where your followers live and where they engage with you and other influencers and where you love to hang out. These are important. You do not need to be on every single social platform out there. So much better to focus on one or two and then go from there as needed. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Uh, step number four. And this is be a great host. Um, so do this the same way that you would do it if you were hosting a party. Your job is to mingle, keep the conversations going, uh, help answer questions, make suggestions, give feedback, give support, share resources, and post enjoyable, interesting content. It's all about how you make your guests feel, and folks on your page are your guests. If you want to make them feel appreciated, liked, and valued, you want to ask them questions reply to comments. I can't um, more highly stress how important replying to any comments you get is. Um, this is what all of the social algorithms are looking for in some way, shape, or form, this, this response. So don't leave that social media gold hanging. Respond to all of the comments that come into your page. You want to be consistent. So don't disappear for days on end or weeks at a time. Uh, be a thought leader by introducing new ideas or ways of looking at topics that are important to your audience. Now, providing interesting, entertaining, and sometimes just plain fun content like <clears throat> live stream videos or recorded videos, um, helpful infographics, inspiring image quotes, beautiful dramatic graphics, fun quizzes, surveys and polls. Um, these are obviously things they should find interesting. Um, links to really time relevant, helpful articles and other resources. This is all great stuff to post. And it is absolutely okay to be whimsical and ir ir irreverent on your pages and just have some fun. It's what I call fluff content. And it really should be kind of the bulk of what you're posting. 50% of your content should be this fluff content because that's the sort of stuff that people really like engaging in. One of the best posts that I I've ever done on my page was for um, National Candy Corn Day. Um, I personally hate candy corn. This is, uh, you know, divides the world. People love it or hate it. And I posted about National Candy Corn Day and asked everybody to give their opinion. And boy, did people give their opinions. Um, and so that was a great post. And then, of course, people say, well, then, you know, what, what sort of business did that get you? The great thing about it is that the next day I posted something that was promoting my business 
And people are so much more likely to see that post because they engaged with the one before. Um, the fluff piece, that helps prime the pump and get people more likely to see the posts that are important for growing your business. So don't forget to include this fluff. It's so important for your pages. Now, there are definitely some don'ts too. Um, you don't wanna get into arguments or vent without really considering what your purpose is in venting or arguing. Um, you know, what is it that you want to accomplish with that? What effects will it have on your fellow group members or fans? Um, by all means, you know, stand up for yourself and boot people out if needed, if there are bad things happening in your groups, but you don't want to alienate your followers. So be sure to stick to your values. And again, stay true to yourself with, with all of the work that you did about figuring out who you are. And again, the most important part here is to be there ready. acknowledgement. Social proof is more than just a few testimonials uh, on a hidden page of your website. So you want to encourage your clients to engage with your community as well. So encourage them to go live in your private Facebook group to share what's working for them and what they're struggling with. Um, this is going to show other clients that they're not alone. Um, consider interviewing them for your blog or in a webinar. Call them out by name and congratulate them on your social channels when they have a breakthrough or accomplish a big goal. Um, blog about their achievements and show share those posts on social media. The flip side of this is, you know, it's heartwarming and helpful when they give you shout outs and spontaneous testimonials. So that's a good thing too. Now, for some reason, a lot of people are afraid to do this. They think that, um, you know, giving, they, they will, you know, give credit when they have uh, need to for a link or a tip, but a lot of people don't really celebrate their clients. Um, and maybe this happens because they've fallen into this, you know, um, uh, master and accolade trap where they think of themselves as the big expert. And even if they are, that's really not the mindset that we want to cultivate, right? And if you want to cultivate a real sense of community, um, you want to definitely give some great shout outs to those folks who you're helping. Um, you know, it, it may be that people are are feeling a little bit insecure. Um, they feel like they have to claim the credit every chance they get. Now, even if you are a bona fide accredited expert with 30 years of experience on everybody, tweak your mindset so that you feel more like one of the team, you know, that you're all there to help each other. Now, a perfect example of this is writer K.M. Wyland. So both in her closed Facebook group and in her blog, her posts generate engaged discussions, questions, and testimonials in a natural and enthusiastic way. And one reason for this is that she is always authentic and her blog is just an incredible, complete course on everything that you wanted to know about writing. So sure, she has written highly acclaimed best-selling books, um, but she holds nothing back in her group or on her blog, and she visits her group on a regular basis, which is every day. So social media absolutely can be boosted with ads, but always keep in mind that it's best used for hanging out with your ideal community and having conversations. It's free and it's the way to reach people in your unique niche all over the world without leaving your home. So let's uh, get into these key takeaways before we get into Q&A. Um, so one, we want to remember that, uh, or we want to know our ideal clients. So um, having that person, you know, think of a, a an actual person, create them in your mind. Who are you trying to reach? And then after you know that, you want to be true to your brand and yourself and always represent yourself authentically out there on social media. Don't invest time in what isn't working. And again, don't spread yourself too thin. Just Pick one or two platforms that you want to be working on and start the party there. Find your community. And when you have that community, you want to be a great host. Make sure that you are keeping things moving by starting conversations, re responding to those conversations. And a really great way to do that is to show off your clients.